having you tell us your full name and two things about yourself. Okay. I'm Eleanor Grandstrom, and two things about me is that I love reading and I want to be a creative writer when I grow up. And how would you describe CBS to somebody who's never heard of it before? Um, I would describe it as it's a migraine variant and it but instead of being like a headache in your head, it causes lots of nausea and throwing up. And there are certain triggers that trigger it. Mm -hmm. Wanna name a couple of the triggers for you? Uh, some of the, trigger, the triggers are heat, exhaustion, not enough food, not enough water, high emotions, and viruses and high emotions are like it could be like you're stressed or scared or sad but it also could be little kids it's like you're really excited about christmas yes we had a couple episodes on christmas oh yes i've gotten sick on christmas several times before <laughs> okay when you think about your elementary school years what do you wish you could tell parents about their kids when they're that age who have cyclic bowel syndrome or other chronic illnesses? Um, you need to be the one reaching out to the teachers and telling them, like advocating for your kid and telling them the, what they need, mm -hmm. the teacher should be doing it. Okay. And I would also just like remind them that I understand posting on social media about your child is normal and like that's a kind of necessary thing you do to like connect with other people but just be mindful about like what you're putting on there because I know it because like it's strange when people that you think are random strangers come up to you and are like talking about things that you consider really personal I think too many teachers what you were what you would tell parents yeah, that, yes. that was hard for me to learn, wasn't it? That I have to be careful about what I post because random people would come up and ask you how you're feeling. Yeah. You barely knew them. Um, what else? Uh, the last thing I kind of would talk about is like the social aspect of missing a ton of school. Um, is like, for one, when you miss a ton of school when you're a kid, your like social skills don't develop as much as other kids do. So it's hard to make friends later on. Uh, when you're feeling like when you're start trying to go back and get better and stuff. And then when you're in that, like when you're in that phase where you're not going to, or you're barely ever going to school, it feels like super lonely cause without having like friends and kids don't think to like reach out or whatever. So then you feel like no one cares. And when you miss lots of school, it kind of like, it hurts your friendships with other kids because you're missing out. So what would you say about going to school? Um, I would encourage the kid, you to try to encourage your kids to go to school even with mild symptoms, if they have mild symptoms, um, because then they're having fun and making new friends and trying to like forget about it. Yeah. But if they're having super bad symptoms and they can't go to school, try to like invite their friends over to watch like a movie or something, or you know, try to connect with kids out in, uh, in other ways. Okay. Um, what would you like to tell other kids who have CBS or other chronic illnesses? Like what advice would you give to other kids with CBS? Um, I would remind them like being being able to go to school, do chores, do extracurriculars like sports, that doesn't make you a good person. So not being able to do those things, not going to school, not doing sports, doesn't make you any, it doesn't decrease your worth as a person. Mm -hmm. And then kind of similar to that, I would share a way I've, come up with thinking about my chronic illness is like thinking of my body as a roommate I need to get along with. It has good, bad, and good and bad sides. Like I'm alive, that's pretty neat, that's pretty cool. 
but also I throw up a lot and I'm much more tired than other kids, but I need to get along with my body because I'm stuck with it. So I need to learn how to like be friends with it kind of. What about coping strategies? Yeah, and the last thing I would like go over is cope, some coping strategies like deep, breathe, deep breathing. Some people call it diaphragmatic breathing, but you don't really call it that. That's fancy. Um, it's my mom taught me it by putting like one hand on your chest and one hand on your stomach and then trying to take deep, slow breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth without making your chest move, only your stomach's rising up and down. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Mm -hmm. What else? I'd also encourage to try like positive thinking because like sometimes when you're really sick, you're like, "This is ne this is horrible. I can't do this. It's gonna like it's gonna be like this forever." And though it's tiring, you have to try and fight back. And think, no, I can do this. This this horrible symptoms are going to get better. And Think of like happy memories and things you're looking forward to. Is try to make yourself remind remind yourself that there's good parts. Mm -hmm. And I'd also recommend like distractions, and they can be things like reading or watching a show, or they could also be more things like doing a puzzle, and that could be like an actual puzzle or like Sudoku or crosswords or something. You know, something that involves the brain. Or you can do sensory things like I have heavy weighted blanket I like, um, good things that smell really good, or yeah, something to just like refocus yourself on something else. And another thing I would say is exercise is actually really good, even when you're not feeling good. Yeah, like. You don't have to tell yourself to do it every day, but it's good to do it like a few times a week because it makes you, it release, it make it like there's chemicals in your brain that get released that make you happier and make your body feel better when you exercise. Which is hard when you have CVS, but it's still worth it. Yeah. And then the last thing I would say is to try to incorporate little things that make you happy into the day. Like when I'm feeling better, if I'm having just mild symptoms, I really like watching popcorn in a tea, I, watching, eating popcorn <laughs> and watching a TV show at night in my room by myself. Or, and then when I'm having super bad symptoms, I'm in like the midst of an episode, I have this box of little fairy stuff that my mom will take out and put on my bed next to me. And that always makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Couple more things. Do you have any tips about how to make the hospital stay better? Yes, I do. Um, I to stay in the hospital. Yes. Uh, one thing concerning the IV pole, it's very bright. There's lots of bright lights on that thing. Noisy, beepy. Yeah. So cover it like the uh, square part with blankets, one or two blankets, and that like makes it better. And also. Name your IV pole just for fun. Make it like, you know, you're stuck with this thing. Name it. Um, another tip is I would ask them for a kid size gown because if you enter through the ER, they usually give you like the huge adult size gown and it just feels good to have clothes that fit you. Mm -hmm. So ask them if they have a kid size gown and on the top of, of asking things, don't be afraid to ask the nurses for anything. Anything. And that means, and like, even if you have, like, don't be afraid to bother them. And also ask, you can ask them for like deodorant, toothbrushes, like mm -hmm. that kind of machine. Sewing yeah. machine. Yeah, they have, they have, you don't know what they have <laughs> until you ask. Parents should ask for a cot to sleep on. Yeah. The first couple times I didn't know to ask and sleep got a lot better once I asked for a cot. Yes, and lastly, uh, to to um, find a good show or a YouTube series to watch to binge watch while you're in the hospital. That's a really good distraction, specifically for hospitals. And lastly, 
try not to be afraid to go home. Like it's always really scary going home because you all the doctors at the hospital and you feel safe there. But you can always come back. If it gets bad again, you can come back. It'll be okay at home too. And last question is um, like the very last thing that you've done in the last year is we went to this pain rehab program. Can you explain why that was so good for you? Um, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect, but the biggest thing that I think it did was this giant mental and physical reset that happened. And I don't entirely understand how it happened really either, but like I was forced to go get up and do this, do these activities all day long. And afterwards, after the pain rehab, my CVS felt like it was better. It wasn't as bad as it had been. It had been like reset to what it was like first grade. Mm -hmm. More in control. It was more, we would, yeah. And that's where you learned a lot about exercising and socializing, mm -hmm. even if you don't feel well and modifying things, you can still do them, but maybe just do them alone. Which changed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that also helped me like believe that I can make friends again and be active again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Now we're focused on who you are and less about your disorder. Your Thank mm -hmm. you.